Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Football Friday here at GoRedbirds.com. I'm Dick Ludke, and I'm joined by a couple of ex-Redbird players who were instrumental in Illinois State's historic 9-7 to win over Northwestern, the only Redbird victory ever against a Big Ten team. It happened on the 10th of September of 2016, and a lot of Redbird fans remember it well, but uh, I don't know that anybody remembers it any better than those who played in that game, like Alejandro Rivera and Sean Slattery, who booted the winning field goal on the very last play of the game. Sean joins us in a moment. Alejandro, welcome. Uh, how are you? What, what are you up to these days? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm um, living in my hometown. I uh, got a one-year-old baby boy, and uh, I'm a police officer here in my hometown. So, And that's Sterling. Sterling, that's correct. Yep. Family's doing well and during this crazy, crazy time and, you know, everything's going well. Well, it's great to see you again. You were a senior on that 2016 team and the leading tackler on that team and the leading tackler in the game against the Wildcats up in Evanston. Going into that game, did you have a lot of confidence that you guys could win that contest against a Big Ten opponent? Yeah, yeah, that's actually one thing I do remember. Um, we had a great week of practice going into it. We practiced up on the um, the grass field uh, for most of the week, and I, I just kind of remember having that that vibe throughout the whole team that we were going in there expecting to win, um, not just to kind of give them a good game. And you know, um, you know, if we win, you know, it's a great outcome. I remember specifically going into that game and kind of the whole team feel of. Hey, we're going to go in this, and we're going to we're going to actually win this thing. We're not just going to, you know, go lay down to these guys. And defensively, it was pretty obvious from the start that you guys were were going to be able to contain this Northwestern offense. What allowed you to do that so well? Do you think? Uh, I, I, same thing that kind of had we had all season. Um, we just had a great group group of guys um, on the defensive side. Um, you know, I remember from that year we didn't really have too many just um, stand out, just guys that just, you know, did it all. And that was just the go-to guy. Um, just in general, as a defense, we had a lot of hardworking guys and guys that knew how to put themselves in the right spots at the right times and do the things that we needed to do as a defensive as a whole, just to kind of, um, you know, contain them and, and uh, limit them to, to scoring and getting rush yards and passing yards and things like that. Well, I assume that was the most memorable game for you in your senior season. So do you remember some specific key plays that, that you were involved with on defense that you could share with us? Yeah, I, I think I remember two specific plays. Um, one play they were going, um, I can't remember a specific yard, they were probably like the 30 yard line and um, they tried to leak their running back as on a wheel route into the end zone and try to hit him on on a uh, touchdown pass I remember that I my responsibility was just to cover a man-to-man and um, if I remember correctly they overthrew it and uh, you know it was just one of those things where they were trying to single me out and I responded and you know they didn't get a touchdown um, the other play I remember um, they tried to they were running a play away from me and uh, I scraped over the top hit the, the, line, uh, the lineman that was trying to come out to me, um, kind of knocked him on his butt, and then made it in on a tackle. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think it was a uh, – I don't know if it was me specifically or a couple of guys, but they fumbled on that play and then they recovered it. But uh, right. those are the two plays that I remember specifically me being in on uh, that uh, kind of made a memory for me. Well, it was a 6 to nothing lead after a late first-half touchdown, George Marrera scoring on a run. And finally, they did get it into the end zone. Nine minutes to go in the game. You guys had played so well defensively until then. And after that, uh, there were two possessions for each team before the Redbird possession that, that produced the winning field goal. So you had two really critical defensive uh, sequences, both of which were three and outs. Talk about the, uh, the pressure that you guys had to feel knowing that you had to get the ball back for your offense to have a chance to win the game. Yeah, one of our kind of models the whole year, coach back is always, you know, next play, next play uh, a mentality. And, and that's kind of the things that he's preached into us. He's a defensive minded guy. So, um, you know, we took that to heart. Um, we knew that even though they scored, we still had to respond and that we weren't out of the game. So um, kind of knowing that when it got down to crunch time, um, 
we just knew we needed to get the ball back into our offensive hands and we trusted them that they were going to, you know, respond. You, you of course, had a great game, but so did so many of your defensive teammates. Um, Dalton Keene is a guy I remember who had uh, a really good contest. Uh, how about some other guys who really came through in that game? Uh, there was, I mean, BJ had, had a good BJ game. Um, yeah. You know, he, I think he like being back out there on the Big Ten field and have that Big Ten feel um, to it. So uh, I, I remember him having a good couple plays, um, kind of the guys you mentioned. Just as a whole, we just kind of all responded and, and uh, did what we had to do on defense to, you know, come out victorious. Well, it was a wonderful performance, uh, just a dynamic victory against a Big Ten team. Alejandro, thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with us. We're going to uh, welcome Sean Slattery to this program in a moment, but let's let's set up the the situation. Seven to six was the score. I mentioned the, the touchdown that George Marrero scored, but the extra point missed by Sean Slattery, the guy who uh, wound up being the hero of the game. He didn't feel too good about that one, I'm sure, especially after Northwestern scored in the fourth period. They made their extra point, so down seven to six, and. Uh, Alejandro, you and the defense made those two big stops and gave the offense one more chance. They got it with three minutes to go. Uh, a great sequence. Jake Colby completing, I think it was all seven of his passes on that drive, seven for seven, and got it down to the 16-yard line uh, for a 33-yard field goal attempt. The final play of the game, and here's what happened. And junior Sean Slattery, the kicker. Here we go. Snap good. Hold down. Kick up. It has distance. It is good. It hit the and the Rippers win the game. It hit the upright. It hit the left upright. And the Rippers have won the game. Well, there it was. A 33-yard field goal that was good. Uh, not with a lot of uh, a room for error there, obviously, as Sean Slattery came up with the winning kick. And Sean joins us now. Sean, uh, that, I would assume, will be one of the more memorable moments of your life, uh, <laughs> even 20, 30 years from now. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, definitely the craziest game, craziest game I've ever been a part of, for sure. Well, you, I mentioned earlier, you had missed an extra point. Field goal attempt, it was a 49-yarder, and as I remember it, you didn't miss it by that much, but it was a very windy day, wasn't it? It was, it was. Um, Honestly, I mean, the whole whole warm-ups, I, I really couldn't figure out the wind too well. Um, definitely not used to playing in, you know, a bowl like that. And, you know, they're always – it's always a swirling type wind in a stadium like that. And I knew that going in, but, um, you know, it, it was kind of hard to figure out. And then, of course, like you said, the uh, the mixed, uh, missed extra point didn't help anything, but um, got it done in the end. So, worked well, out. So, talk about – on that final drive – the Redbirds, I think, started that drive back at their own 14-yard line, somewhere right around there, inside the 20. And it was pretty obvious. It was the last chance for the Redbirds to get it done, down 7-6. to six, And and the offense starts to move it up the field. I remember Anthony Warham making a big catch. Uh, Marrera had a couple of good runs. Colby, as I said, 7-for-7 seven seven completing passes. What was going through your mind at that point? I mean, you're obviously hoping that they, they get into position to, to give you a shot at a field goal, although they could have scored a touchdown to, to win it, which would have taken the pressure off of you. What were you thinking about as, as that drive developed? For sure. Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, where, you know, where the drive started and Colby, you know, Colby got hot, like you said, he completed whatever it was, six of six or seven to seven passes. And I, once we kind of got to about our own 40 or so, I was like, okay, here we go. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, just, just like any other time, um, you know, the coaches, you know, prepare us really, really well. And, um, you know, full disclosure, I mean, I obviously wasn't having the best day ever. So um, just kind of had to, you know, rethink everything, just kind of a clear, you know, like, like Hondo said, next play type mindset coach back preach, you know, preaches out all the time. So um you know, I, I knew I was capable of it and, you know, got out there and got it done. Were you uh, doing some practice kicking on the sidelines as that, as that drive developed? I was, I was, um, you know, as much as I could. Um, I was just kind of trying to keep my nerves down, you know, as much as possible. Um, you know, once we got a little bit closer, I was, you know, kind of doing the math of, you know, how far it's going to be and everything. And, um, you know, obviously an extremely makeable kick. There's no reason it should have, you know, been as close of a call as it was, but, um, 
yeah, just, just happy I got it done for well, sure. Yeah, it, it was obviously well within your range. You kicked a couple of 50 yarders as a Redbird. So a 33 yarder is a very makeable field goal for you. But as, as we said earlier, it was windy and a lot of pressure on you. So uh, you, you make the kick. Tell us about what's going through your mind as you see that ball heading toward that, uh, toward that upright. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously getting really close. Um, you know, those at that state in particular, they've got really high uprights. So I, I hit it really, really well, uh, really solid hit. I, I did kind of kind of just yank it, honestly, just kind of like a hooked golf shot, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, once it, once it kind of kissed off the glass and then um, I looked at my holder, Cody Thielen. I mean, he had a, he had a great hold, um, just kind of looked at each other in disbelief and, um that kind of started to set in. So it was awesome. And your snapper, was it Seth Combs? No. So that would have been, uh, that would have been Brandon Barry at the time. Okay, I right. believe at, yeah. Because I believe it was the, the short time, snapper uh, and Combs yes. was the long snapper. Yeah. Yep. Well, those two guys of course were a part of it as, as was, uh, everybody on the field. Uh, you, you tend to focus on the kicker, but it's, it's 11 guys out there making it happen. But you oh, were the no, guy no, I was, Absolutely. I was always just super, you know, super lucky with, you know, having great snappers and great holders. I had, it seemed like I had a different one every year, but um, all of them were, were awesome. So it worked out really well. Well, what a victory it was. Uh, now, uh, Sean, tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life right now. Yeah, so I'm actually still living in Bloomington Normal. Um, I actually work for um, a medical supplies company. So um, really enjoyed it so far. Um, been a sales rep for them for a little while now. So um, yeah, really enjoying it and still uh, still here in Bloomington Normal. Well, good to have you here and uh, good to have you talking with us about a memorable Redbird football game. Uh, thanks a lot, Sean. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So we relive the 9-7 to Redbird victory at Northwestern. That was about three and a half years ago. Thanks to Alejandro and to Sean for joining us. And thank you for tuning in here to Football Friday. This is Dick Ludke saying so long for now.